I was contacted very recently, like a day or two ago, by a lady who told me that she was a transgender woman and that she was trying to find a way to kind of simulate her period. Um, so I'm going to do how to kind of create some fake menstrual blood that you could put either on a pad or if you um, are a transgender woman who's had her genitalia changed, so from a penis to a vagina, then you can also try maybe using a menstrual cup. And so to make the fake menstrual blood, you will need some water. I've just put some in the mug. Black food colouring and red food colouring. And also corn flour. I tried to use everything that was edible because I figured if it was edible, you could also put it in your vagina. Just seemed like it wouldn't be dangerous. And then I'm also going to use a plastic cup so you can see this better. So, start off with, I'm going to take three tablespoons of water. One, two, three. It doesn't matter if this is like correct or not. Actually, I'm going to do four. I'm going to make some a little bit more. Then I'm going to take a tiny, tiny bit of corn flour. Let me get some in. So, I realise, also you could probably do this for other things, not necessarily menstrual blood, but it looks quite realistic. So you see, I'm not even going to use all of that, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit in. So, about that much. And the idea of this is just to turn the water slightly opaque. Don't worry if there are any little like lumps and bumps. So there you can see the water's now gone cloudy. We need the corn flour anymore. Then you need your food colouring. So I'm actually just gonna grab quickly some lovely rubber gloves because the food colouring does like like to stain your fingers. You can see my finger from yesterday when I was trying this out. Um, so I'm just going to do that very quickly. I highly recommend you get this type of food colouring. This is the silver spoon, which is in like a squeezy bottle. It doesn't get all over your fingers, unlike this one, which gets everywhere. So I'm going to do one full cap of this, which I guess would be the equivalent to like half a teaspoon. And just pour it in. I'm not going to put the cap on, I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm just going to check this with my finger. I'm going to mix this up. Take my gloves off. Mix it up right now. So it should be this kind of like... Hang on, let me turn the camera down a bit. So you can see here, it's this really kind of dark red consistency. Then I'm just going to add in one to two drops of black. So one... Probably two, realistically, but I start off with one because black is a very, very strong food colouring colour. You can see there, it's nice and dark. And that is the effect you're going for. And actually, I might still add in one more drop. Okay. We're done with the black. Mix it up again so that it's really nice and dark. And I do actually have, um, if you are kind of gross out about blood, I'm not really sure why you're watching this, but anyway, I have saved some of my blood from uh, my cycle this month. I only remember to do this on the fifth day of my cycle, so I was very, very light. But this is what I kind of held on to. So you can see it is really dark. It's surprisingly dark. If I can just grab a small teaspoon or tablespoon of this fluid, you can kind of see that yes, this one's a bit red, but they are both very dark. Menstrual blood's a lot darker than many people think. So that's the kind of comparison between the two. So to show you how it would look on a pad, I'm just going to grab one of these always overnights out and just stick this down on the table here. And open the wings up. So. Here I'm just going to grab one tablespoon and you'll see, this is about the, well actually a little bit less than that, it's probably about the average amount one woman would bleed um, on a regular day, maybe if she was had a regular tummy period, between three to four hours. So this would be the amount you'd need just for um, one pad wearing session. I would always change my pads every uh, three to four hours when I was using disposables. 
So I'm going to pour this along. I'll add some more because it's an overnight pad. And I would always bleed in the middle here. And then kind of trail towards the back of it. So let's do a little trail here. That would literally be what mine look like. So you can sort of determine the pattern of how you bleed. Some women bleed right to the front of their pad, some women bleed just in the center, some of them always bleed to the back. Um, it, it determines, it's determined by which way your cervix is kind of tilted really, but uh, you'll figure it out very quickly. So you can kind of determine where you want to bleed and also how much liquid you make will determine how heavy a period you have if you're going to simulate it. So I put it on about that much and then I'd wear it and if it feels damp, you get the right sensation. That's what we all have to deal with. And now I've just got food colouring all over my hands. So yeah, that's the downside to using food colouring. It is probably going to stain you a little bit, but then again, we're already pink down there anyway, so it won't look any different, to be that honest. And if I peel it up, you can see how it looks on the back. It looks very realistic as well. Front and the back. Now, the next option you have for using... Um, you know, this fake menstrual blood is to put it in a menstrual cup. And I was kind of wondering, I wouldn't do it with a tampon, um, simply because it's not a good idea to do that with an absorbent fibre and leave it in your body. Um, but you could do this with a menstrual cup. And I was trying to figure out how that would work, because you have to fold the menstrual cup up in order to insert it. But I realised the one cup this might work with, and I tried it out with and it did work, was the Femicycle, because of its um, no-spill rim like you can see here. So this is the best cup I discovered and um, what you're going to have to do is put the little rim thing in, take just about, just under a tablespoon of the fluid, do it over this of course, and then pour it into the cup. Okay, so we can get that last little bit in there. Now this is designed to be a no spill cup because of this. There might be a drip or two, but basically you can turn it, turn it upside down and it won't leak. So I tried doing this yesterday by folding it up to insert it into me. And I squeezed the rim like so. Hang on, let me zoom in a bit. I squeezed the rim like this and then I folded it over like this and kind of held it loosely. And you can see I can still fold it whilst keeping all of that liquid in there. I inserted it, got it open, and I could leave it in me and get up and walk about and then actually hook my finger into the little loop, take it out, and then, you know, my body had actually warmed up the fluid. Within like a minute or two, it warmed up the fluid inside, so it felt like when you're taking it out, it would feel warm, which is exactly how it feels like when you're taking real much blood out, and I've already stained my finger. <laughs> I just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. For everybody out there who ever said Barbie was too perfect, there's a doll for you. The normal Barbie, who has cellulite, stretch marks, and now even gets her period. I'm talking about the Lamely doll, with realistic body proportions and a passion for educating girls about their own bodies. She comes with a $10 period party extension kit, an educational pamphlet, doll underwear, 19 colored pads, and stickers to track periods. The founder told Time Magazine, it's just what happens in real life. We wanted to put it on the doll so it's not a scary thing. They also released a funny video which shows why some girls might prefer to learn about this stuff from the doll instead of their parents. Real girls period, real girls period, from now on you'll have a myriad. Real girls period, real girls period. Right now, I'm not at home, 
so I found a really nice place out in nature that's um, public land, and I tune in with Mother Nature and with Earth and ask where is a good place to offer my blood as, as a gift and as healing. Um, here I have some blood that I have saved from um, wearing a diva cup, which I don't have with me in, in this moment, but basically it's a cup that sits inside the vagina and collects blood, um, similar to a tampon except that it's a cup. Um, and when I'm not at home, I take that blood and put it in a container so that I can properly put it into the earth as opposed to just flushing it down the toilet or um, in the sink. Um, and that's because our blood is very precious and um, it holds our DNA and it holds our life essence. So for me, it's very important to honor this sacred uh, fluid. I also have, um, I don't like wearing a cup or wearing something inside of my vagina all the time. I, I had to get some pads and um, soaking them in water and then taking the, the blood with the water out to your plants, um, your garden, or to the earth. So what I'm going to do is take the plastic backing off because I don't want to put that into the ground. Although it's going to go to landfill anyway, but when I'm in ceremony, I'm going to just stick with the um, part that's biodegradable. Um, so I'm going to tear off, I was able to, to tear off the, the whole cotton part, and I'm going to put that down here. It's kind of two layers coming off. So this part, unfortunately, I'm going to have to throw it in the trash, but that's, a, that's okay. Um, and then since I have the liquid blood, I'm going to pour that in as well. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm really, um, I'm really setting intentions and saying prayers to myself, asking for healing, um, forgiveness, offering, offering healing to the earth as well, because this is a symbiotic relationship. Um, we're humans that live on the planet Earth, so we definitely have a give and take relationship with the earth. So I normally silently do my prayers, uh, but for the sake of this video, I'll just kind of say out loud, I ask for healing of my body, I ask for cleansing, and I give healing to the earth. We will make America great again.